Now we're going to discuss connective tissue. Connective tissue is your most diverse tissue category. It does a lot of different things, such as support, protect, and bind. In addition to that, connective tissue can also insulate and transport material. So like I said, it's the most diverse tissue types of your body, and it's also widely distributed, meaning you can find it in all different parts of your body, and it's very abundant. So let me tell you about the four types of connective tissues. One is a category called connective tissue proper. The second is cartilage. So for instance, cartilage in your nose, in your ear, in your knee. Third is actually bone. So your entire skeletal system is connective tissue. And finally, blood. Blood is also a connective tissue, even though you might not think so. So then you might be thinking, how are all of these classified as connective tissue? They're so diverse, so different. All right, so here's what I like to say is what you need to have to be in the connective tissue club. How do you get membership to the connective tissue category? Well, it's actually pretty simple. You have to have one, some cells, but just a few cells. So not like epithelial tissue where we saw them tightly packed one next to another. In connective tissue, the cells are spaced out. So for example, in this picture here, you've got one cell here, another cell here, another one here, another one here, and so on. So again, the cells are spaced out. So because the cells are spaced out, you have a lot of space in between the cells. That space is called extracellular matrix. Remember, extra means outside the cell. So matrix is the space. So extracellular matrix is the space outside of the cells. And then the third thing all connective tissue has is an embryonic origin from a tissue called mesenchyme, meaning that all connective tissue, regardless of whether it's blood, or bone or cartilage, its origin is basically birth comes from this mesenchyme tissue, like a common ancestor. All right, so let's dig in a little more about similarities for all connected tissue. So we said they have few cells, they have extracellular matrix, and they all have the same origin of mesenchyme tissue. In addition, We've got the cells, right? We've covered that. So all of them will have cells. Uh, for example, some cells are macrophages or mast cells. They're part of the immune system, all right? So here you can actually see a really cool macrophage. A macrophage is a cell that engulfs or eats another cell. So this tiny macrophage here is actually eating this huge cell right here. The second component that all connective tissue has is fibers. So these fibers are actually all in the extracellular matrix, so they're outside of the cell. There's three main types of fibers. There's collagen, elastic, and reticular. So collagen fibers are the thickest and strongest fibers. So if you look in this picture right here, those would be, for instance, the collagen fibers, the thick purple ones. Elastic fibers are smaller, and like their name implies, they're more elastic, so they're more stretchy. And then reticular fibers are the thinnest of the fibers. They're the weakest, but they'll also be really important too. So again, collagen's gonna be the thickest and strongest, and then down to reticular, which is gonna be the thinnest and the weakest. And then the last thing that all connected tissue has is the ground substance. The ground substance is part of the material that makes up the extracellular matrix. So it's like the background material or the glue that's holding all the cells and fibers in place. So again, you've got the cells and then you have the fibers and ground substance. The fibers and ground substance combined will make up that extracellular matrix. All right. So let me briefly cover the four classes of connective tissues, and then you're gonna dive in and look at each one of them on your own. So there's the connective tissue proper category. So this is the broadest of the connective tissue categories. It includes loose and dense connective tissues. 
under the loose, we have areolar and adipose. Adipose is your fat. And then we have dense connective tissue proper, which contains regular and irregular. The cells of connective tissue proper, there's a lot of them, but all of them will have cells called fibrocytes. Fibroblasts are the immature forms of fibrocytes. So fibroblasts develop into fibrocytes. The second class of connective tissue is cartilage. There's three main types of cartilage, hyaline, elastic, and fibrocartilage. The cells that make up cartilage are chondrocytes. Now the chondroblasts are the immature form of the chondrocytes, so they're kind of like the teenagers or the kids of the chondrocytes. Chondroblasts will develop into chondrocytes. Then there's bone. There's two main types of bone, spongy or compact bone. Those cells are called osteocytes. The immature form of the osteocyte is osteoblast. And then the last category of connective tissue is blood. And we've got red and white blood cell. So notice a trend whenever you see the word blast. That means that's the immature form of the cell, where the site is the mature cell. All right. So with that in mind, you're ready to start exploring each of these classes of connective tissue and what is in each class. Note what's in the connective tissues, where it's located, and what it's used for. But this slide here is going to be important because this is going to help you categorize your connective tissues. And when you study them, it might get a little confusing looking at each individual one, but always come back to this bigger picture so you can always place each connective tissue in its proper category.